Welcome to chapter number 15, Exploring Neural Filters. First, let's start off by understanding what is a neural filter. If you've worked through earlier lessons in this book, you've used Photoshop filters such as Surface Blur, Smart Sharpen, Clouds, and Liquify. Those are conventional filters that produce the results with algorithms, producing procedural programs where the code itself determines the result. The newer neural filters produce results in a different way, combining traditional algorithms with machine learning and other advanced techniques. Machine learning, like a filter of neural filters, can be trained using many examples of desirable and undesirable results, creating better images that could be achieved with procedural computer code alone. Neural filters are different from other Photoshop effects in the following ways. Neural filters are trained by machine learning in neural networks. Some filters need to be downloaded for the first time before you use them. This is partly to save on your computer because some neural filters in the machine learning modules can be quite large. And if you need to download a neural filter, you can do it with one click in the neural filters workspace. Some filters display a message saying that they process image data in the cloud or the Adobe Creative Cloud servers. They may need more power than a desktop computer has, or a machine learning module may be too large to download. It is possible to use some neural filters without an internet connection, but you get the most options when your computer is connected to the internet. Artificial intelligence brought into Photoshop. It's only been around for a couple of versions of Photoshop, but it is starting to really change a lot of things as the artificial AI world has done in so many different facets. So let's get started. First, we go and find our file, chapter 15, in the bridge. And we're going to compare the restore, compared to the restore end file. It does a pretty good job of fixing that file. So to start, we're going to open up the 15 restore PSD file. It may open up a menu, something like this, depending on if your default settings are there. We're going to use the embedded profile. We're going to go up to filter down to Neural Filters. And in the workspace that pops up inside of Photoshop, it'll be on the right side. And we're gonna go ahead and skip the tour for now. In the Neural workspace, the image appears in a large preview on the left, as we see here. And we see a lot of different options on the right. To use the filter, it has to be embedded or downloaded. We'll have to click and download that particular portion. Now let's see if this photo can be restored using the Neural Filter. So go to the photo restoration option. I'm gonna go ahead and download that and then speed it up for your sakes. Now that it's downloaded, it's gonna have some options for me. I can choose the option here to see before and after. And it does a pretty good job of restoring the quality contrast in the image with smoothing out our skin tones. As needed, adjust the first two photo restoration options and then repeat to step number two. We left it, according to the book, at 50 on the photo enhancement and 15 on the hands to face, which reserves a little more of the film texture. And we're gonna go ahead and zoom in on our option here. See the corner, using the hand tool. Remember, spacebar can use the hand tool. So it'll be a little slower because it's using the neural filters and the generation. And we're gonna adjust the scratch reduction to a setting of 20 and hit okay. And it'll process for a little bit on the bottom of the image. You'll see the progress bar. And when it's done, the scratch is intelligently removed. If you have any software running in the background, I recommend turning it off so it runs a little smoother because it's using a lot of internet processing power right now. And there you have it. You greatly improved this image using the restoration neural filter. For output, we're going to go ahead and go to the bottom section to set a current layer. We're going to choose smart filter. And then we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And then you go ahead and save your document. So what it does, and it might take about five minutes of processing. I have a pretty good computer, but about five minutes to process that completely out. Now let's look at adding color in depth blur. We can go ahead and open up our picture of the little boy, a little black and white old school photo, and then the colorizing at the end. We'll go ahead and open up the colorize.psd file. Pops up the same menu that we had before. And we're going to go down to Colorize, and we're going to go download it. In the filters list, we're going to go ahead and go to the color category, and we're going to toggle the switch next to the Colorize filter to enable it. 
in the filter category, we're going to go down to the auto color and we'll go ahead and make sure it is turned on, which it is, and it does a pretty good job of quickly colorizing the young boy in his bicycle. If you disagree with the settings, you can go ahead and change some of the sliders and make some changes based on the artificial intelligence. And we're going to go ahead and hover over the preview image here on the right. And we can click in some different portions of the picture, like his shirt. And we can change it to a different color. And hit OK. And we'll make some adjustments based on that particular point. If you disagree with the overall color adjustment, in the photography section of the Nero filters, we're going to toggle the depth of field blur. We'll have to download that one as well. First, we're going to disable the focus subject option, little checkbox, and now we've brought this image back to life. We're going to set our focal distance to 40 so that more of the bicycle remains in focus. Change that to 25. We're going to go ahead and change the focal range to 40 to keep more of the bicycle in focus. And then all that's a little bit better. It's not necessarily perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. I'm going to go ahead and choose Smart Filter from our option, and go ahead and hit, hit OK. Before I do that, we see the before and after. Personally, I like it with the background also showing the detail without the blur, but you can do as you need. Now let's go ahead and create a more convincing composite going to open up between this piece and that piece. We're going, to droop. we're going to open up the 15 composite file. And we're going to save it as our practice, 15 composite. And we're going to go ahead and save as. Save as composite dash working dot PSD. Now to start, we actually make, to make sure it will open, we need to have the planet layer selected. I'm going to go to Filter, down to Nero Filters. And in the Filter list, we're going to go ahead and click the Landscape Mixer Filter. Go ahead and download that. And with this mixer open, you can actually take a landscape image and change even seasons quite easily. And you can go ahead and experiment with some of these different settings if you choose. The one to use for the project is in the upper right corner. It will take a little bit to process. And once it's done its processing, we're going to go ahead and hit OK, making sure it's opened as a Smart Objects filter. So we have the Smart Objects filter still intact. We're going to go ahead and turn on our Heroin layer. Notice that the colors still don't match as good as they could. So we're going to click the Heroin layer, make sure it's activated. And we're going to go to Filter, Nero Filters. And in the color category, we're going to do the harmonization filter. The harmonization filter will help match the colors of the tone to match another layer. In the reference image, we'll go ahead and select a layer. First, you have to make sure it's activated, which now it is. Select a layer, and we're going to choose the planet option. It'll process a little bit and help them to match a little bit better. Now we're going to take the cyan red agenda and about one third of the way towards red, about there. And we're going to reduce the brightness to a negative 30. And any other adjustments you find to make it more convincing. You can see before and after. And it's definitely helping make the images match. Making it a smart filter, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And there's the layers. Now to finalize the composite, we're we'll going to turn on the Guardian text layer. And good work. You've used Nero filters to transform the look of both images into just a few steps, making them look together and match much more closely than they did when we started. Well, thanks for watching chapter 15. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Better Picks in just a few clicks. Go ahead and smash that like button and hit subscribe to see more videos just like this one.